Now we're going to learn how to draw Lewis structures for molecular compounds. There are different ways to do this. This is the approach the book uses, and I think it's a fine approach, so I'm going to go with this as well. You want to start out by um, having a skeleton. Halloween's coming up, right? So we want the correct skeletal structure. What does that mean? We want to figure out how the atoms are connected to each other. Because if that's wrong, the whole thing's going to be wrong. And it's not always easy to figure that out, but I'm not going to try to trick you with that. One thing we can be certain about is that hydrogen atoms are always going to be terminal. Terminal means on the end. So, you know, here's just a molecule. These, these hydrogen atoms are terminal. They're like the terminals at the airport that stick out so the, the planes can come up next to them. You walk out there and the, the only place you can go is to the airplane. It doesn't go to another part of the airport. It's a terminal hallway, right? So these guys are terminal. This oxygen would be terminal. These carbons, though, they're called central atoms because they're in the center. So hydrogen is always terminal because it can only make one bond, so it can never be in the middle. More electronegative atoms also tend to be in the terminal positions. So you figure out your skeleton. Then you're going to calculate the number of electrons. So we're looking at the number of valence electrons from each of the atoms. We're going to add them together. And that's the number of electrons we can have in our Lewis structure. If you have an ion, you have to consider the charge. A positive charge means you lost an electron. A negative charge means you added an electron. It's kind of backwards. Plus means you lost, and minus means you add. Then we're going to take those electrons, and we're going to distribute them around and we're gonna to try to make all the atoms happy. A happy atom has an octet, unless it's hydrogen. Hydrogen just needs a duet. Try to make everybody happy. It's one of the things I like about Lewis structures is most of the time you can make everybody happy. It doesn't happen in real life. If you run out of electrons before you get octets, that means we need to share more. So then you'll make double or triple bonds as needed. So those are the guidelines. Let's do an example. Write the Lewis structure for CO. Well, this only has two atoms, so the skeleton is pretty simple because they have to be connected to each other. So I'm just going to connect those with the bond because if there's no bond there, it's not part of the same molecule. So I've got my skeleton, and then we need to see, well, how many electrons are going to be in this structure? How many does carbon have? Valence electrons has four because it's in group four. And how many does oxygen have? Six because it's in group six. So that's a total of 10 valence electrons, which my students pointed out last night looks like love. So I guess 10 valence electrons is equivalent to love. So I'm going to be spreading some dots around. So I already have two here as the bond. And if it helps you to put a dot at each end, do it. So there's two electrons, four, six, eight, ten. I'm just kind of scattering dots around until I run out. Are carbon and oxygen happy? Do they have an octet each? No, they don't. Nobody's happy. This isn't okay. We need to share more. So we can take lone pairs and bring them in to share them. So I'm going to take a lone pair from carbon and bring it in here. Spread it out a little bit. And make that into a shared pair of electrons. I have not changed the number of electrons. I'm just rearranging them. So. Now, oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Oxygen's happy. Carbon has two, four, six. Not happy yet. 
So oxygen has enough, carbon does not have enough. So the element that has enough needs to share with the element that doesn't have enough. So I'm gonna take one of these lone pairs from oxygen and have it share with carbon. Okay. Now let's count electrons again. So this carbon has two, four, six, eight. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Yay, everyone's happy. Now that looks a little weird. So we might want to, you know, draw it a little less weird looking. We, what we have there is a triple bond and each of these has a lone pair. It doesn't matter exactly where you put the lone pair, but people, people like symmetry. So that would be the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. This method of drawing Lewis structures, we, we're not looking at where the electrons came from. We're just taking all the electrons, we're pooling them, and then we're distributing them around. We don't care where they came from. Let's write the Lewis structure for H2CO. This one is a little more complicated um, so the hydrogen is going to be terminal, right? It can't be in the middle. Um, so, well, is the carbon going to be in the middle or the oxygen? Well, there was a, a guideline that said more electronegative elements tend to be terminal. So let's try carbon here and oxygen and hydrogen attached to it. That's two hydrogens, a carbon and an oxygen. It's not the only way you can connect them, but that turns out that's the right way. Um, so how many valence electrons do we have to work with? We're gonna count them up. Two hydrogens each have one, right? One valence electron per hydrogen. How many does carbon have? Four, and oxygen has six. Oh yeah, I heard the six that time. Okay, four plus six is 10 plus two is 12. So I've got 12 valence electrons. So I already made some bonds because these guys have to be connected. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I've used up all my electrons. I'm not gonna give any more to hydrogens because they are too small, they can't handle it. They're good with a bond. That's all they need. So carbon here has eight. Remember, we're, we're generally putting the electrons top and bottom, right and left, like the four points of the compass. And so you can kind of look at that and say, oh, that looks like eight. But this oxygen over here it's got top and bottom and left, but nothing on the right. This guy's short, and if we count two, four, six, he's short. So carbon has enough. So carbon's gonna share with oxygen where oxygen doesn't have enough. So I'm gonna take this lone pair off of carbon, and I'm gonna cause them to share and make that a, a shared pair. When carbon does that, it's still happy because it can still count those electrons that it's sharing. So carbon has two, four, six, eight, and now oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Everybody's happy. And then we might want to uh, redraw that just to make it look a little nicer. Oops, helps to use the correct letters. And that would be the Lewis structure for H2CO. And you said the one that's more electronegative is in the middle? The one that's more electronegative is terminal. Mm -hmm. um, a Lewis structure will have the lone pairs shown as dots. Yeah. Any other questions?
other questions? Okay, so if we're if we have a polyatomic ion like nitrate or phosphate or something, we can let, draw a Lewis diagram, a Lewis structure, and we have to consider the charge. So we're going to add an electron for every negative charge and subtract one for every positive charge. Then we're going to draw our Lewis structure and put brackets around it and put the charge on the outside. The way I think of this is we don't want the charge to get mixed up with all the dots and stuff. We want it to be clearly separated. So let's do hypochlorite ion, CLO, with a negative charge. So again, we only have two elements here, two atoms, and so they must be next to each other. So there's our skeleton. And then we're going to count up the valence electrons. How many does chlorine have? Seven. And how many does oxygen have? Six. And the negative one, am I adding one or subtracting? Adding one. It seems like you should subtract because negative is subtracting, but we're adding a negative, right? So that's going to give me 14 valence electrons. Now we can give out our dots. So there's one, two here for that bond. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Nice. Came out just right. Yeah. Yeah, so like I, like I mentioned, we're not, we're not going to care about where those electrons came from. Um, so we're just going to put them all in a basket and then hand them out so everybody gets happy. There, there's another way of drawing Lewis structures where you do consider where the electrons came from. And if that works for you, you can go ahead and do it that way. But this is what I'm going to stick with. So we need to put the charge on the outside. Because if we left off the brackets in the charge and somebody looked at that, they'd say, that's not a correct Lewis structure because chlorine and oxygen don't have that many electrons. Well, they do here because it's an ion. Where did they get that ion, that extra charge? At this point, we don't care. It came from another atom, probably a metal. Any, any questions? Yeah.